At the beginning of the scene, we see a group of boys and they are bullying a fat man. That fat guy was Wu Lingan, the main character of the story. He was an otaku who was bad at refusing others. Because of his appearance, he'd been bullied by his strong classmates since he was a child. But because of that, he studied even harder. Wu Lingan believed that after entering the workforce, everyone would judge people based on their abilities, and no one would call him a disgusting fat otaku anymore. However, after studying hard he realized that he's not only a fat otaku, but also a bad student. After graduation, he could only rely on his body size to work as a sparring partner in a gym. At that moment, Wu Lingan was reading it and it was written that they were hiring a professional gym, sparring partner wanted, no diploma required. Room and board are provided, and over 200 pounds are preferred. But the moment he entered the gym, these men punched and kicked him. Wu Lingan clenched his fist and he was crying at that moment. He was confused about why everyone bullied him. All of a sudden, someone grabbed his shoulder. This man was supervisor Mei Renshing. He smirked and called him Xiao Wu, which means little. Then he told Wu Lingan to help him with the month's report. But Wu Lingan pointed himself and said that he was just a sparring partner. Nevertheless, Wu Lingan silently asked himself why he was always doing so much work. All of a sudden, Mei Renshing showed his muscle and he was enraged at that moment. Then he asked Wu Lingan what he said, and told him that he didn't hear him. Instantaneously, Wu Lingan accepted it and told him that he said, he'd take care of the report. Then Mei Renshing told him to finish it and send it to him quickly. At this point, Wu Lingan was just silent and he was stunned. In an instant, the other men came and they insisted to Wu Lingan to do with their reports. Wu Lingan was mad at that moment. But still, he just smiled and said that he'd take care of it all. Meanwhile, at 12 midnight in Wu Lingan's apartment, he was still awake doing the reports of those men in the gym. Even though he was feeling tired, he still did the work. But he was confused about why he didn't refuse just now and he told himself that he's not even getting a raise. All of a sudden, Wu Lingan was shocked and his heart hurt so much. Then he remembered the doctor told him to lose weight or he'd die suddenly. At this point, Wu Lingan was curious if he was really going to die. Instantaneously, he was trying to reach his cell phone and according to him, he needed to call an ambulance immediately. Unfortunately, there was a message that his phone service had been suspended due to insufficient funds and he needed to recharge. After reading it, Wu Lingan was shocked. Then he suddenly touched his chest and said that it looked like he was really going to die there. But all of a sudden, he gritted his teeth, and his eyes became red. According to him, before he dies, he must make a change. He can't be a disgusting fat otaku anymore. Then he checked the study materials on the computer and he chose to delete them. At this point, he laid his head on the table. Then he smiled and said that now he can be at peace. According to him, if there's a next life, he will definitely not be a disgusting fat otaku. But the computer operated alone and the study materials were sent suddenly. Mei Renshing was shocked and he was confused that Wu Lingan's report was done so quickly. Then he immediately checked the study materials. And all of them were surprised after seeing it. Meanwhile, 20,000 years later at Kyushu continent Dongjo, this lady was holding a man and she was calling him. Lingan brother. This lady was Fox Demon Clan Tu Shan Xiaoyu. At that moment, she was asking Wan Lingan if didn't they agree to explore the outside world together. But why he was still lingering there on the back mountain? Then Wu Lingan answered and said yes, without realizing it, he'd been training there for 20,000 years. But he'd still just an ordinary person with a bit more strength. Going down the mountain would only cause them trouble. At this point, Wu Lingan was now a young demonic sect master and his appearance really changed. However, Shan Xiaoyu was shocked and he was confused about how an ordinary person could lift a mountain. But Wu Lingan was just stunned and said 10,000. According to him, it was right, he was truly reincarnated. He was reincarnated as the young master of the demonic sect. All of a sudden, they were both shocked at that moment. However, the now declined demonic sect can't protect him. To avoid being hunted by righteous people, he can only hide in this deep mountain. Then he grabbed Shan Xiaoyu's head and told her to finish training and that they needed to go back. Shan Xiaoyu just looked at him, and she just smiled. According to Wu Lingan, 
if it weren't for this little fox he saved keeping him company, he might have gone crazy from boredom. Because of the lessons from his previous life and the constant pursuit in this life, for a full 20,000 years, he has consistently disciplined himself through training every day. However, after training for a long time, he realized. He'd crossed into a fantasy world. And he, a genuine Wu Lingan has no spiritual roots. Aside from the good physique he'd trained, he has nothing else. Wu Lingan clenched his fist. And instantaneously, he punched the huge snake in their front. At this point, the snake fell down and the ground was cracked suddenly. Wu Lingan was just stunned. Then he told Shan Xiaoyu that they'll have snake meat today, and she just agreed to what he said. Shan Xiaoyu was thrilled while she was looking at Wu Lingan. According to her, a golden core stage flood dragon was defeated with a single punch, as expected from her brother Wu Lingan. All of a sudden, a man appeared above and he was calling Wu Lingan a bold thief. Then he asked him how dare he snatch the flood dragon he half slayed. This man was from Xuantian Academy internship instructor, Xiao Chunha. At that moment, he was mad and he asked Wu Lingan to commit such a shameless act, could it be that he was the remnant of the demonic sect? But Wu Lingan was just stunned and he was looking at Xiao Chunha. Then he suddenly told Xiao Chunha that he was not, he didn't and not to talk nonsense. All of a sudden, he kneeled and bowed down. Then he was saying that he was really sorry, and he didn't mean to. Xiao Chunha was just startled and in his mind, a little fox demon and an ordinary person with no spiritual roots. Then Xiao Chunha said that it seems there's no need to waste words. All of a sudden, Xiao Chunha used his golden creation art demon burn technique, second style, and said die for your disrespect. He threw his sword at Wu Lingdan but he just blocked it with his hand. Xiao Chunha was shocked and he was just sitting down on the ground. He was startled at that moment and confused if Wu Lingdan just caught it. Instantaneously, Wu Lingdan bowed his head and told Xiao Chunha that knowing that he wanted to kill him, he still caught his flying sword and he said sorry to him about that. Shan Xiaoyu was startled and she was confused about what is Wu Lingdan up to again. However, Xiao Chunha was just pointed at him. In the immortal world, he was even more afraid of people's rejection. Xiao Chunha just smirked and he closed his eyes. According to him, it's impossible that an ordinary person without spiritual roots could not possibly catch his flying sword. But he suddenly pointed at Shan Xiaoyu and told her that she must be helping that kid behind the scenes. Then Shan Xiaoyu was shocked and told him that if she struck, he would die. At this point, he was just speechless. All of a sudden, he threw his swords again and told Shan Xiaoyu that it was such arrogance. Then she and Wu Lingan can go to hell together. But still, Wu Lingan managed to block it in his own hand. Zhao Chunha was just startled. And he was confused that Wu Lingan blocked it again. Instantaneously, Wu Lingan bowed his head and told Xiao Chunha that he could kill him, but he must not hurt Xiao Yu. Then Shan Xiao Yu was thrilled and in her mind, Brother Lingan blocked the flying sword for her and Lingan cares about her. Xiao Chuhua was mad and he released a lot of swords. Then he told Wu Lingan that he didn't believe him and could catch so many flying swords. Wu Lingan was looking at the flying swords. Then he was so fast and he was able to catch it. Wu Lingan smiled and he said sorry that he instinctively caught them all. Nonetheless, Shan Xiaoyu was glad and in her mind, Wu Lingan was so bad, and he really liked him. Xiao Chunha was stunned and he was just speechless at that moment. However, he immediately stood up. Then he smiled and said that it was a senior from the Righteous Alliance, earlier was a misunderstanding from the junior. And he told Wu Lingan to please return the flying swords to him, and he'd leave immediately. But he was suddenly shocked when Wu Lingan threw it to him. All of a sudden, there was something exploded behind him. Then according to Wu Lingan, he really can't refuse others. Nonetheless, Xiao Chunha was still shocked at that moment. Then Wu Lingan told Shan Xiaoyu that they needed to go back since they still needed to cook for his dad and the others. Shan Xiaoyu immediately followed him. They both turned back and Wu Lingan carried the snake. But Shan Xiaoyu told Xiao Chunha about today's event, she didn't want to hear a word of it. And she asked him if he understood. Then Xiao Chunha agreed with her and said yes. However, Wu Lingan called Xiaoyu to hurry up and catch up. Then Xiaoyu told him that she was coming and they both leave together at that moment. This man was enraged and he was confused about who are those mysterious people. 
Then he smirked and in his mind, they can only be happy now. He was confused about when he told the old ancestors of Xuanchun Academy what would happen. According to him, he'd make sure Wu Lingan, the demonic cultivators would pay for it. At this point, while these two were walking, Xiao Yu was shivering and said that even nascent soul stage cultivators could be defeated. Then she told Lingan that he still claimed to be an ordinary person. But Wu Linjin asked her how could he possibly be a match for a cultivator. According to him, that guy must just be joking with him. Then Xiao Yu told him that he definitely looked like he was trying to kill him. Wu Lingan told her that he knew very well that he was an ordinary person without any spiritual roots, so he trained his body even harder. But Wu Lingan told him that there's no need to train even while walking. In her mind, even so, he's really cute when he's this clueless. Meanwhile, in the middle of the mountain, Wu Lingan was carrying the meat of the snake that he pierced through the wood. And they were about to enter the cave. While they were entering the cave, there was a message outside that there was a demonic presence inside, ten crimes unforgivable. Then this, man in the prison was mad and said that let him see who dares to enter there. He asked someone if do he not know that this is the territory of the demonic sect. But Wu Lingan just smiled and told them that he brought snake meat today. Then all of them were glad and shocked when they saw that it was Wu Lingan. And the man on the left said that they've missed him so much. All of them were starving and they wanted to eat the snake meat at that moment. According to Wu Lingan, they may not look like good people, but they're actually uncles who care about him. All of a sudden, the demonic sect leader, Wu Lingan's father, Wu Di was mad. Then he told Wu Lingan that he hadn't come to see him for three hours. And he asked Wu Lingan if he even considered him as his father. However, Wu Lingan told him that he got delayed by hunting and cooking and he asked his father that don't he really loved throwing tantrums. But his father was asking him if cooking takes that long. And he told him not to think just because he was sealed, he didn't know what was going on outside. Then he asked Wu Lingan weren't he coaxed by that little girl into wanting to go down the mountain again. But Wu Lingan told his father that it was not it. But his father was suddenly angry and told him that absolutely not. Then Wu Lingan didn't finish his talks. At this point, both of them were shocked and puzzled. According to his father, even though he'd been sealed for 20,000 years, he still remembers the cunning of those righteous people. Then he asked Wu Lingan that if he went down the mountain without any experience, is he trying to make him, an old man, bury his own son? But at that moment, Wu Lingan was just saying sorry to his father. He bowed his head and gritted his teeth. Then suddenly, he told his father that he said the same things every time and he'd heard them for 20,000 years. After hearing it, his father was shocked at that moment. But Wu Lingan told his father that even if he's hunted, injured, or even killed out there, he doesn't want to stay in the deep mountain forest anymore. All of them were shocked upon hearing Wu Lingan. The red-haired man told Wu Lingan that he was too naive. Then the other man said that he was still stuck at the body refining stage after 20,000 years. Going out now is suicide. But the other man told him that their Wu family only had him left, and he absolutely could not get into trouble. All of a sudden, Xiao Yu raised her hand and said that actually, they just ran into a righteous cultivator. After hearing it, they were all shocked. Then Xiao Yu continued and said that the cultivator was at the nascent soul stage, but Lingdan defeated him with a single punch. But Xiao Yu said that it was just a misunderstanding. However, his father was stunned and he was confused about how could a righteous cultivator appear there and has Lingdan really became that strong. Then he told Lingdan that even so, he's still an ordinary person without spiritual roots. Even if he has the strength of a nascent soul stage, how will he face stronger cultivators? At that moment, Lingdan was just stunned and Xiao Yu was worried about him. In addition to his father, he told Lingdan that don't think that just because he happened to defeat one or two righteous cultivators, he's invincible. After hearing his father, Lingdan suddenly clenched his fist. Then he asked his father who said anything about being invincible and he told him that he was not interested in that nonsense. According to Lingdan, only by reaching the tribulation stage can he break this damned seal and rescue all of them. And in the deep mountain forest, he can't even break through the body refining stage. At that moment, they were all startled. And his father was just speechless. Then suddenly, his father asked his companion if they told something Lingan, and all of them denied it at that moment. 
However, Lingdon told his father that in the 20,000 years, even while sealed, he's always been trying to protect him. Now that he'd grown up, it's his turn to protect him. After hearing that, his father was worried, and he was unable to speak. The only thing he mentioned was Lingdon's name. Suddenly, Xiaoyu told them that there was something they all seemed to have forgotten. Then she told them that since Lingdon has been stuck at the body refining stage, he has no demonic aura. As long as he doesn't admit it himself, the righteous people won't be able to detect his demonic sect identity. These two were both shocked and the man in front of Xiaoyu said that it seemed to be the case. But Lingdon's father said that it's still not okay. If Lingdon releases even a trace of demonic aura during a breakthrough, he's dead for sure. And he absolutely cannot accept that outcome. Nevertheless, Lingdon turned back and said that he'd already made up his mind, and he told his dad to please not to blame him. Then his father was mad at that moment. But he had nothing to do and he was just speechless. Suddenly, he told Lingdon to stop. And Lingdon was startled while he was looking above, and he saw something. All of a sudden, Lingdon caught it and they were both shocked at that moment. Lingdon was looking at it, and he was confused about what was it. Then his father told him that it was the entrance exam qualification for Shuantian Academy. Since he insists on going down the mountain, that can be his first stop. All of them were confused at that moment. Then someone asked if isn't the top righteous cultivator academy. According to one of them, it's said that anyone who enters can at least reach the golden core stage upon graduation. Then Lingdon's father said that it was right, that was Shuantian Academy. But Xiaoyu was confused and asked if it wasn't the stronghold of righteous cultivators and if wouldn't be more dangerous for Lingdon to go there. According to Lingdon's father, the most dangerous place is the safest place. They won't expect a demonic cultivator to walk right in. Moreover, the cultivation paths in the Shuantian Academy are as numerous as the stars. It's the most likely place to find a path suitable for Lingdon's cultivation. Then Xiaoyu told his father that he understood. Meanwhile, Lingdon prepared his things. Then he carried it and invited Xiaoyu to go to Shuantian Academy. And Xiaoyu told Lingdon's father that Lingdon was so like him. But he was confused and he asked him why it was such a rare exam qualification and how he, someone imprisoned, got it. Then his father said that she didn't need to know. And he can no longer protect Lingdon. Sending him to Shuantian Academy to cultivate is the best way he can think of to keep him alive. At this point, Lingdon was looking at the map and he asked if the road down the mountain was this way, right? However, Wu Di told Xiaoyu that the secret of Lingdon's body, he'd leave it to him, the quasi-emperor level 9-tailed fox, to protect him. Xiaoyu was startled and she was speechless after hearing it. Then Xiaoyu said that she understood that issue. But she was confused once Lingdon and she leave who will bring him food. Wu Di was just speechless at that moment. Then someone told him to hurry up and eat. And the other man said now that Lingdon's leaving, this is their last good meal. But Wu Di was mad and told them to stop and save some for him too. However, Xiao Yu smiled and told him to enjoy his meal, and she said goodbye to him. But suddenly, Wu Di told him to wait. Then Xiao Yu asked him what is it since she was not bringing him any food. Wu Di told her to remember, the world is on the brink of collapse. The power hidden within Lingdon must awaken soon. And she doesn't have much time left. After hearing it, Zhao Yu was just speechless. Meanwhile, at the Shuantian Academy, the man in front told the examinees that no cutting in line. Maintain order, and he informed everyone to prepare their entrance exam tokens. But these two were both shocked while looking at Lingdon's things. She was confused if this is what the Righteous Cultivator exam site looks like. She was hoping she didn't attract anyone's attention. However, the instructor told the examinees to listen up must insert their exam tokens into the stone lion's mouth. It will automatically detect the authenticity of the tokens and whether any of them are demonic spies. Then he told the man in front that not just stand there, and he was up first. He immediately followed and put his exam tokens to this lion's mouth. Then suddenly, the lion reacted, and he was not bitten by the stone lion. This man told him that no problem, he could go in. Nonetheless, he thanked his instructor. Then the instructor called the next and at that moment Lingdon just swallowed. He touched his head and he was confused if the token that his father gave him was fake. According to him, 
He haven't practiced any demonic cultivation methods, and he was worried if he shouldn't be detected. All of a sudden, they were all shocked. And they were looking at this examinee in front, and he was bitten by a stone lion. Then the instructor said that a demonic cultivator had been found. This fat guy said that the stone lion is made of special material. Not only is it extremely tough, but once it detects an anomaly, it bites down and doesn't let go. But Lingdon was confused and he asked if is it really that powerful. Then they immediately caught the demonic cultivator and he was begging them to spare him. According to him, he just forged a fake exam token, and he's not a demonic cultivator. But the instructor told him enough with the excuses and he told his comrades to lock him up. Nonetheless, the instructor pointed at Lingdon and he told him that he was next, and it was his turn. But Lingdon was just startled and he asked the instructor if he meant that it was him. Then the instructor told him yes, you with the big backpack, you look the most suspicious. Hurry up and insert your token. At this point, Lingdon was in front of the stone dragon and he looked so afraid. He was shaking at that moment. Then the others felt it and the lady was confused if there was an earthquake. However, Lingdon put his token. And the instructor said that the exam admission ticket is fine. Then Lingdon was startled at that moment. Lingdon sighed and said that it was great. But suddenly, the stone lion's eye became red. Then the mouth was opened very big. Unfortunately, before Lingdon could remove his hand he suddenly bit it. Then Lingdon was shocked at that moment. All of a sudden, the stone lion was broken and they were both shocked. The instructor and Lingdon were both looking at each other. Then Lingdon said sorry to him and told him that he would fix that for him right now. But this instructor was mad and told his comrades that Lingdon was also a demonic cultivator, and they must arrest him quickly. Instantaneously, they arrested Lingdon. But he was confused and asked the instructor why his admission ticket was fine, and why are they arresting him. Nevertheless, this man was enraged and told him that the stone lion automatically attacks when it senses demonic energy, and he asked Lingdon what he have to say for himself. At that moment, Lingdon was just speechless and stunned. In his mind, it must be because he'd been with the others for too long and he'd also been tainted with the demonic aura. All of a sudden, Xiaoyu came and told them to stop. Then she asked, things haven't been clarified yet, you righteous cultivators are too careless with your arrests, aren't you? But the instructor was confused and asked her why is a monster clan member meddling in Shuantian Academy's affairs. Then suddenly, Xiaoyu grabbed Lingan's hand. And she told the instructor that she was the guardian of Lingan. Then she asked him why did he think she should be involved. Nonetheless, the other examinees were all shocked at that moment. Then the man on the right asked guardian, isn't that someone the big sects assigned to protect important disciples? The man beside him said that it seemed that the kid had quite the background. However, Xiaoyu told the instructor that since he'd confirmed that the admission ticket was fine, then he must take a closer look at its origin. After hearing that, the instructor was shocked and he was confused about it. Then the instructor immediately looked at the token and he was shocked. According to him, that was the legendary number one sect in the world. Xiaoyu told him that he was right, the very sect that was destroyed by demonic cultivators 20,000 years ago. And Lingdan is now its only successor. After hearing that, Lingdan was shocked and he was looking at Xiaoyu. The man with brown clothes said that the number one sect in the world was so powerful, yet it was destroyed by the demon cult. But the fat guy told him that he didn't know. Because the sect's name was literally the number one sect in the world. Nonetheless, Xiaoyu asked the instructor if it wasn't understandable that the admission ticket was tainted with some demonic energy. But the instructor was speechless at that moment. Then suddenly his comrades told him that it seemed that Lingdan accidentally inherited the legacy of the number one sect in the world. Now, given the delicate relationship between the righteous cultivators and the demon clan, that must be handled carefully. All of a sudden, the instructor laughed and told them not to let him catch him doing anything suspicious. Then Lingdan told him that they would behave themselves. In an instant, Lingdan took a step. Then they both entered the academy. Xiaoyu told him not to be so tense. As long as he acts like he usually does, no one will suspect him. But Lingdan was confused about it. Meanwhile, at the Shuantian Academy, a man was standing in a small house in the academy, and he was looking at the students below. This man was Shuantian Academy instructor, Mei Yanli. At that moment he was just speechless. 
Suddenly, the master of Jichao Pavilion, Huang Luhong came and asked him how are the, the new students this year. Then Mei Yanli told him that it was not bad. There are quite a few promising students. Even the Heihuan sect and the Yujian sect sent some people over there. Yujian peaks by Di and Heihuan sect's young master, Tai Shengkao 9 Duan Zongma. Duan Zongma asked Bai Di if she would like to practice dual cultivation with him. But this lady just told him to get lost. However, around her was gossiping about her. Someone said that she is so pretty. Then according to one of them, this girl is the only daughter of Yujian Peak's master. But one of them was confused if she was the super genius who broke through the foundation establishment stage at the age of 11. At this point, this girl was stunned, and in her mind, her father was right, none of the newcomers at Shuandian Academy were worth her attention. Going back to them, Mei Yanli said that although the quality of this batch of new students isn't bad, but Huang Luhong was startled and he was confused about it. Then Mei Yanli asked why does it feel like something weird has mixed in. Huang Luhong laughed and said that Lingan must have just broken through to the qi refining stage and wanted to show off his strength. But according to Mei Yanli, with such a flashy character, he bet he won't even pass the first test. All of a sudden, he took a step. And he jumped off. Then he was calling the attention of everyone. The students were all surprised after seeing him that he could actually fly in the air. However, this man introduced himself and said that he was Mei Yanli, the instructor in charge of the new students' assessment. Next, he will conduct the entrance test for them. Only those who pass all the tests will be eligible to become disciples of Shuantian Academy. At this point, Lingan was looking above. Then he was confused about why the instructor looked so familiar. All of a sudden, instructor Mei Yanli pointed at him and said, Hey, you over there, the one who loves showing off, why are you staring at this old man? But at that moment, Lingan was just startled. Then instructor Mei Yanli told him that his dangling thread was a bit reflective. All of a sudden, Mei Yanli was shocked when something hook his clothes. At this point, he was speechless and the students were just looking at him. Suddenly, he came closer to Lingan. Then he smiled and told him that he looked forward to his test result. And Lingan just thanked him. Instructor Mei Yanli wanted to tell something but someone was pulling him up. Then he was mad and he looked above while asking idiot. Didn't I tell you to stop when you reached the spot? However, this girl was annoyed and she was confused about what kind of weird scenario is this. Why can't the instructors at Shuantian Academy even fly and how does this newcomer have the guts to point that out? But Huang Luhong smirked and said that starting off by offending that petty guy and that kid is in big trouble. All of a sudden, Mei Yenli was mad at that moment and his clothes were torn off so suddenly. Then he was stunned and said that was just to lighten the mood. Now he'd proceed with the first round of the test. Wu Lingdan was just looking at him and he looked afraid. But he was confused about is there really a need to tear off his shirt for the test. And he was worried that the instructor was mad. These students were shocked and the man on the right was curious about those strong muscles and the terrifying aura of the instructor. Then suddenly, this fat guy said that it was the legendary sandbag's sacred body. But the man beside him was confused. According to the fat guy, the sandbag's sacred body can't cultivate actively and can't use spells but it can absorb others' attacks and capture the released spiritual energy for its own use. In other words, the stronger the sandbag's sacred body's owner becomes. It is immune to all attacks from those of the same level. One student said that it was such an overpowered skill exists. Then the other student said no wonder, he's been an instructor for decades. Lingan was stunned and he was confused about becoming stronger by getting hit, does that mean only masochists can become cultivators? However, Instructor Mei Yenli told the students that now, each of them will hit him with a punch using spiritual energy. He will judge their strength, talent, and future potential based on their attack. The students look afraid at that moment. Then Instructor Mei Yenli looked at Lingan and he laughed according to him, he was scared, which meant the first test was entirely under his control. If he dared to offend him, no matter how talented or strong he was, Mei Yenli made sure he failed. Then he pointed at Lingan and told him that he'd start first. Wu Lingan clenched his fist and he told instructor Mei Yenli that he'd better be prepared, and he's pretty strong. But instructor Mei Yenli smiled and told him that even a nascent soul stage cultivator might not be able to hurt him. 
and there's no way a newcomer like him could possibly. But all of a sudden, he was punched in the face. And he was thrown away by Wu Lingan. These students were shocked at that moment. Then Huang Luhong just laughed and he was startled at the same time. At this point, because of Lingan's full force punches to instructor Mei Yenli, creates a hole in the wall. Then he was stunned and according to him, it's over. He was looking at the instructor at that moment. But Mei Yenli was just fainted. Then Wu Lingan asked the other students if that meant he passed the assessment. But all of them were shocked and afraid of him. All of a sudden, the little fox Xiaoyu jumped into the roof. Then she was sitting on the roof and according to her, as expected from Lingan, he caught everyone's attention as soon as he entered. However, the students with eyeglasses asked the fat guy if didn't he say that any attack below the nascent soul stage wouldn't affect Instructor Mei. But the fat guy told him that he was not sure, the books didn't mention that kind of situation. Then this lady was looking at Lingan and according to her, it seems she's not the only one hiding his true strength. And she was confused about how Lingan managed to do that. Nonetheless, Huang Luhong came down and he went closer to instructor Mei Yeli at that moment, and Lingan was just startled. Then Huang Luhong told Lingan that the power of his punch was almost at the late nascent soul stage. But according to Lingan's this old man is dressed like a traffic light. Suddenly, instructor Mei Yenli regained his consciousness. Then was about to stand up. And suddenly he was heading to Lingan at that moment. He was mad and he told Lingan that he was a bastard, he attacked him when he wasn't ready. And he told him to hit his stomach, not his face. But Wu Lingan just bowed his head and he said sorry to instructor Mei Yenli. Then this fat guy smiled and said, so that's it, instructor Mei wasn't ready just now. The men behind him were shocked and said that no wonder the legendary sandbag's holy body couldn't withstand a single punch. However, instructor Mei Yenli told Lingan that the previous test doesn't count. If he uses such tricks again, he'll disqualify him directly. Then Lingan agreed with what he said. Then suddenly the instructor's body was thicker at that moment and it was called the sandbag holy body immovable sandbag. These students were shocked and the fat guy said that it turned out to be the immovable sandbag. That was the ultimate defensive move of the sandbag holy body. And it can convert all of one's power into defense. Nonetheless, instructor Mei Yenli told Lingan that this is the move he used for final tests on cultivators in the tribulation transcendence stage. Today, even if he used all his strength, he won't be able to shake. But he didn't finish his words, and in an instant, Wu Lingan punched him very hard in his stomach. Then he was startled when he noticed that nothing had happened to the instructor. And these students were glad and said that the immovable sandbag is indeed formidable. Instructor Mei didn't move his legs when a little this time. But Huang Luhong was confused about what they meant and didn't move even a little. According to him, Instructor Mei fainted while standing. Then he immediately came closer to Instructor Mei and told the students that Instructor Mei wasn't feeling well today, and they'd consider all of them as passing the first round. All of them were glad that they all passed the first round. But someone was confused about what realm is he in, he's so strong. Duan Zongma smirked and he told Lingan that he didn't expect there to be another strong person besides him in the assessment, and he asked him what's his name. Then he told Zongma that he was Wu Lingan, and he asked how about him. This man introduced himself and said that he was Zongma, the 108th generation successor of the Heihuan sect. He practices Iron Mountain Lean, 9th level, Shaking Flower Hands, 4th level, and his hobby is dual cultivation with others. All of a sudden, he grabbed Lingan's shoulder and told him that judging by his performance just now, he'd reluctantly accept him as his brother. Lingan was just shocked at that moment and he was confused if he was not planning to dual cultivate with him. However, this fat guy asked them if they take them in as their little brothers too. Then he introduced himself and said that he was TNG from the Tianji sect. He can provide the most accurate information for the big brothers. And he told them to please take care of him. Suddenly, he gave something to Lingan and told him to forgive his rudeness, although he mainly collected information, and he didn't have any data on him. Lingan was just looking at him and in his mind, it was such a friendly feeling. Then someone told him that he wondered which sector school is he from but Lingan just scratched his head at that moment, and he was just silent. However, he laughed and told them that he was a rogue cultivator. All of a sudden, Bai Di was heading towards Lingan and looked so serious. 
Then she pointed at him and said that he really likes to steal the spotlight. And she'd make him understand the gap between him and a true genius. In an instant, Bai Di turned back and she was leaving at that moment. Then this student was just silent and he was looking at Bai Di while she was leaving. However, Huang Luhong told them not to celebrate too soon. All of a sudden, he pressed the button of the remote that he was holding. Then suddenly, the ground was shaking and the students were confused what was happening. And someone said that it's an earthquake. Instantaneously, they were covered with this square-shaped item. It has an armor, and a robot inside. These robots surrounded the students. Then this man introduced himself to them and said that he was Huang Luhong, the master of Jichao Pavilion. And also the examiner for their second round of testing. All the puppet mechanisms appearing in the square were created by their Jichao Pavilion. During the assessment, they will continuously launch concealed weapons to attack them. The test lasts as long as an incense stick burns. If they exit during this time, the puppet mechanisms will stop attacking. The fewer hits they take, the higher their score. And it's not a good thing for weaklings to pass by luck. Because the concealed weapons fired by the puppet mechanisms. It's the real deal. At this point, these puppet mechanisms started attacking the students. Then Huang Luhong said welcome to the candidate's graveyard. All of them were running and avoiding the attack but Lingan was just stunned. Then this puppet mechanism attacked again, and Lingan dodged the attacks. At this point, while the students were attacked by the puppet mechanism, Huang Luhong was startled and said that the Huhuan sect guy wasn't doing too badly. Then Zongma was using a Phantom Iron Mountain Lean. He smirked and said that when he used Phantom Iron Mountain Lean, no one could sneak up on his back. Then he was hit on the chest and he said, that attacking head-on is despicable. Nonetheless, Huan Luhong was annoyed and according to him, he didn't say anything just now. Then suddenly, he was startled. When he saw Bai Di, and as he stated, this girl from the Yujian sect was surprisingly strong. But Bai Di was suddenly startled at that moment. Then Lingan punched the puppet's foot and it was broken. He sighed and said that in that way, he wouldn't be hit. Huang Luhong was mad and suddenly he shouted and told Lingan that he should not misunderstand the assessment point. That test is about their speed. Huang Luhong was still mad and told him that the test was about testing his speed. If he breaks his puppets again, he'll disqualify him. Lingan was scratching his head and he just smiled. Then he said sorry to Huang Luhong and told him that he was not very clear on the assessment rules. Bai Di was startled and in her mind, no wonder her father said that men are animals who love to show off. However, Lingdan grabbed the puppet and he told Huang Luhong that he'd bring him out right now. All of a sudden, someone operates the remote control. And it was instructor Mei Yenli. He said that there's no need to waste words with that brat, Lingdan. Then Huang Luhong was shocked at that moment. But Mei Yenli told him to just let Lingdan feel the power of those puppets, and he immediately pressed the button. All of a sudden, the puppet mechanisms transformed and it became a huge robot. Then Lingan was looking at it and he was confused if it was a transformer. According to TNG, it's actually the Yuanrong fusion. Those puppet mechanisms definitely have strength beyond the golden core stage. But he was confused if they even wanted anyone to pass their test. And not only that, those puppet weapons are coated with deadly poison. The man beside him was shocked that TNG can even tell about that. But he just said that no, he just felt really dizzy and the two students were shocked while they were looking at TNG's back. However, Huang Luhong told Mei Yenli that this wasn't the time for a lesson. He's going too far and this could kill someone. But Mei Yenli asked him, so what? You don't want that arrogant brat to pass the test. Then Huang Luhong was just speechless at that moment. All of a sudden, this puppet mechanism attacks. And Lingdan was dodging it. Then he glanced at his back when he heard someone screaming because of the pain they felt. These students were hit and the lady asked him what did they do to deserve that. But Lingdan just smiled and told them sorry for dragging them into this. At this point, Mei Yenli was enraged that Lingdan could still dodge. According to him, he'd just send a few more puppets after him. Then suddenly, more puppets were heading to Lingdan at that moment. Lingdan was startled and he looked mad. But Mei Yenli told him that if he damaged any more puppets, they would disqualify him. Someone cried and said that all the puppets were attacking Lingan, so things were much easier on their side. 
Then the man on the left was worried that Lingan surrounded by so many puppets and couldn't fight back. And TNG told Lingan that he'd burn incense for the next year. However, Bai Di smirked and in her mind, this is what happens when Lingan likes to show off and her father is right. At this point, Lingan was stunned and he looked afraid. But he said that this is the only way. All of a sudden, he jumped off. And fly. Then the puppet's mechanism didn't caught him and they were collided each other. These two instructors were both shocked and Mei Yinli was confused about how is that possible for Lingan flu. And Huang Luhong was worried about this puppet. These students were shocked and the man on the center asked what realm is Lingan's in. Then the lady asked that the sword flying requires at least the golden core stage, right? But TNG told her, no, Lingan's is not using spiritual aura to fly. He's just jumping with his leg strength. And he's using the force of stomping downwards to counteract gravity. According to TNG, he can't believe how strong Lingan's body is. But Mei Yenli said that no matter how strong the body is, there's a limit, and Lingan can't stay in the air for long. Then he pressed the button at that moment, and he told the puppets to attack where he's going to land. Instantaneously, there were arrows below Lingan. He was shocked and he just gritted his teeth. As he stated, he can't destroy the puppets, and he'd lose points if he got hit. He was confused about what should he do, but he was shocked when he saw Bai Di was blocking the attack at Lingan. At this point, he just stepped the arrow below him. Then he was heading to Bai Di at that moment. But Bai Di was shocked when he saw Lingan was in her front. Then he smirked and Bai Di was confused so she asked Lingan what is he going to do. She looked so shocked and she was worried about why is Lingan suddenly getting close to her she was confused if he could be the pervert that her father warned her about. All of a sudden, the puppet mechanism attacks Lingan and he suddenly hides at the back of Bai Di. Then Bai Di was blocking the attack while she was just standing, and Lingan was just shocked while looking at her. But Bai Di was suddenly mad and she told Lingan not to use her as a shield. Then Lingan just said sorry to her and told her that this was the only way he could think of. Instantaneously, Bai Di swung her sword and luckily Lingan managed to dodge. Then she pointed her sword at Lingan and told him that she'd take him down first. In an instant, Lingan turned back and he was planning to escape and in his mind, he was doomed now since he was being attacked from both sides. But suddenly, Bai Di told him to stop. Nonetheless, the lady was confused and asked why it felt like their test had nothing to do with them. Then TNG said that as expected of Boss Lingan, he's still dodging skillfully even when surrounded on both sides. And someone said that it was so impressive. At this point, Bai Di was chasing Lingan and instructor Mei Yenli was looking at them. Then he laughed and said that he would see how Lingan would escape now. Suddenly, instructor Mei Yenli pressed the button again and it was attacking Lingan again, and he was just startled. Then instructor Mei Yenli just smirked at that moment. In an instant, Lingan was stunned and according to him, he'd got an idea. Then he glanced at Bai Di and he was confused if she give up. All of a sudden, Lingan screamed. And instructor Mei Yenli was curious about what he was doing taking a deep breath when he was about to die. Then Bai Di was shocked when there was a strange aura using his deep breath. All of them were shocked at that moment, and some of them were floating in the air. Instructor Huang Luhong asked Mei Yenli what Lingan's planning was, and Mei Yenli told him it was just a bluff. But these two were suddenly shocked. Then instructor Mei Yenli told Lingan that don't think just because he talk big, he can pass this test. Wu Lingan was shocked at that moment and he asked instructor Mei if he interrupt for a moment. Then he told him that the incense stick for the test seemed to have burned out. After hearing it, instructor Mei Yenli was shocked and he was just speechless. However, instructor Huang Luhong was startled, and in his mind that breath just now accelerated its burning. Then he was confused about what was going on with Wu Lingan's body. All of a sudden, TNG shouted and said that Boss Lingan had a deeper purpose. He is trying to get benefits for everyone. At this point, they were all shocked and Bai Di's clothes were torn. Then she was suddenly mad. She turned back and she told Lingan that this wasn't over between them. But Lingan was confused and he asked what did he wrong. All of a sudden, someone came. And these students were shocked at that moment. Then this man said that it's been so many years since he'd encountered such an interesting freshman. According to him, this year's new student assessment is so vibrant and full of life. 
This man was Zan Academy Dean, Yu Tianxing. At this point, the students were confused about him. Then someone asked if he was the head of the Shuandian Academy. According to the man on the right Dean, Yu Tianxing seems unreliable. Then the other man said yes, even his wig is almost falling off. All of a sudden, Tianji told them not to talk nonsense, that was the legendary red flame Shura Yu Tianxing. Then the students behind him were shocked and someone asked why doesn't he go out when the weather is clear. According to TNG, rumor has it that Yu Tianxing was a terrifying existence that slaughtered countless demon cultivators 20,000 years ago. His decisive killing made righteous cultivators shudder, and his red hair was dyed with the blood of demon cultivators. However, the man beside him said that it certainly sounds impressive. But he was confused about why is his red hair fake. All of a sudden, Dean Yu Tianxing called Lingan and he asked him what is his name. Then he answered and told him that he was Wu Lingan. At this point, Xiao Yu was on the rooftop and she was looking at them. She was confused as to why the headmaster of Xuandian Academy suddenly appeared. According to him, Lingan offended him right from the start and they need to make amends quickly. All of a sudden, he secretly called Lingan and he was asking him if he could hear her. Then Lingan was startled and he knew that it was Xiao Yu. Then she told him that he had blown off the headmaster's wig just now, and he needed to put it back on before he reacted. However, instructor Mei Yenli had something to tell to Dean Yu Tianxing. But he told instructor Mei Yenli that he knew that Lingan's behavior was a bit reckless, but as a teacher, he should be magnanimous. He looked up and told instructor Mei Yenli that if he was as strong as him, the headmaster, he asked him if would there be any issue. In the end, isn't it just his skills that are lacking? At this point, Lingan was heading to the dean. With his fast speed, he immediately fixed the dean's wig. Dean Yu Tianxing was startled and he was confused what was that speed just now. Then he saw Lingan and according to him, if not for his sharp eyes, he wouldn't have noticed. Nonetheless, Lingan raised his hand and he smiled. Then he told Yu Tianxing that he dropped something and he's picking it up for him is what he should do. In addition to him, he told the headmaster that no need to look at him with such gratitude. But instructor Mei Yenli was shocked while he was looking at headmaster Yu Tianxing. Unfortunately, instead of a wig, Lingan's accidentally pierced an arrow to the dean's head. Then instructor Mei Yenli told him that he seemed to be injured. Xiao Yu was mad and he told Lingan to distinguish between the wig and the hidden weapons before making a move. All of a sudden, the instructor Mei Yenli grasped Lingan's clothes and asked him how dare he attack the headmaster. But Lingan just smirked and he said sorry that he must have seen it wrong. Then he was startled when Dean Yu Tianxing asked him if he really thought such small things could hurt him. But instructor Mei Yenli was worried and he told him that his blood seemed to be flowing continuously. Then he told Mei Yenli to stop talking nonsense, this is all part of his test. Lingan smiled and said that as expected of the headmaster of Xuandian Academy, nothing seemed to faze him. But Xiao Yu was mad and she asked Lingan if he couldn't see the headmaster was just putting up a brave front. All of a sudden, Dean Yu Tianxing pulled out the weapon that was pierced into his head. But his blood was flowing continuously, and Lingan was just startled at that moment. At this point, Dean Yu Tianxing was about to fall. And luckily instructor Mei Yenli catches him. These students were shocked. Suddenly, instructor Huang Luhong told everyone to leave the field passes the second round. The class assignment test will start tomorrow at noon. But instructor Mei Yenli was mad at that moment. However, they both helped the dean headmaster and they were heading to the alchemist hall. But these students were all shocked and someone asked if they passed the assessment. Then the man in front said that yes, but it still felt off. Suddenly, this man glanced at his back and said that it felt like they'd forgotten something. In an instant, the puppet mechanisms attacked them, and all of them were running to dodge it. Then they shouted and told Huang Luhong that he had forgotten to deactivate the mechanical puppets. At this point, Lingdan was on the stage and someone was hiding and observing them. This man said that he didn't expect him to deliver himself to him. Meanwhile, at this moment, all of them felt very tired. Then the man with brown clothes said that today, he almost got shot dead, and the man beside him said that they were the same. However, in this room, Lingan was still doing muscle exercises. Then Xiao Yu asked him what aren't he resting so late. 
Lingden told her that he needed to keep strengthening his abilities and that he must pass tomorrow's assessment. Then Xiao Yu told him that the upcoming class assignment was indeed crucial. Only by reaching a better class can they get more training resources. But balancing work and rest is also important. All of a sudden, she got something and she told Lingden that she would apply some red flower oil to help unblock his meridians. But Lingden was annoyed and he told her that her expression didn't seem like she wanted to help him with his meridians. Nevertheless, Xiao Yu told him that he was indeed the most ambitious. Unfortunately, Xiao Yu bumped her foot into a big stone. Then Lingden immediately caught her and told her to be careful. But she was thrilled at that moment and according to her, her plan succeeded. However, in the middle of the night, Bai Di was still outside. Then she suddenly remembered Lingden and according to her, she would make him pay for what he did to her. All of a sudden, she heard something. And she was curious about what that sound she heard. Then she looks at the room. And she was startled at that moment. She saw Wu Lingden and Xiao Yu's shadow and she was confused what is Wu Lingden doing in the room. She was stunned and according to her, it was not right. Wu Lingden just arrived at Xuanyuan Academy and she was confused about how could he kill someone in the room. Nonetheless, she told herself that she must have gotten up too hastily and she needed to calm down and take a closer look. Then she came closer to the window and according to her, the evidence was clear. But at this moment, Lingden was using a black iron skipping rope, weighing 3000 jin. Then he told Xiao Yu that he left in such a rush that he even forgot to bring his jump rope. Xiao Yu told him that luckily, her uncle and the others found it. Unfortunately, she spilled the red flower wine used for treating external injuries. However, she got cleaning supplies and said that she would clean up the spilled wine first. But she slipped all of a sudden. Then Bai Di was worried and she said that no matter what, she had to save that girl. Suddenly, the girl bumped into the window, and Bai Di was shocked at that moment. She immediately covered her face and according to him, it was already too late. However, Lingden asked Xiao Yu if she was okay and Xiao Yu just told him that she just fell. But she was startled and said that her clothes got dirty. Then Lingden was shocked and speechless at that moment. All of a sudden, he turned back and opened the cabinet and he told Xiao Yu that he would find some clean clothes to change into. Then Xiao Yu told him that he was so considerate. All of a sudden, Bai Di kicked the door. And she called Lingden a murderous demon. Then he told him to surrender now. Then they were both shocked at that moment. Bai Di pointed her sword at Lingden and told him, You murderous demon, you even desecrated the corpse. But Xiao Yu pointed herself and asked how did he become a corpse. At this point, Lingden was stunned and he was confused about it. All of a sudden, he was shocked and he asked Xiao Yu if could it be that she had discovered his identity as a demon cult member. But Xiao Yu told him that not at all. However, Lingen told Bai Di to listen to his explanation. But Bai Di was mad and she told him there was no need to talk more with someone like him. All of a sudden, the Lingxiao sword technique was already started. Then Bai Di was ready to attack Lingen at that moment and she said 10,000 swords attack. At this point, Lingen gritted his teeth and said that he had no choice and that he had to offend her. In an instant, Bai Di attacked him and Lingen managed to dodge it. Then Bai Di was shocked when he saw Lingen was so fast. Nonetheless, she holds her sword tightly and she tells Lingen not to think that is all she has. Her sword was shining and she told him to take his sky piercing sword strike. She was startled, and all of a sudden, she attacks Lingen. But Lingen just blocked her attack and he punched it. Bai Di was shocked and in her mind, Lingden actually shattered her Lingxiao sword QI with his body. At this point, she felt a fast speed that passed by her. Then Lingden immediately appeared behind her, and he hit Bai Di's back neck, it's called memory erasing hand chop. In an instant, Bai Di fell down onto the floor. Then they were both shocked and Lingden just said sorry, and he can't really reveal his identity, so this is the only option. Xiao Yu was startled and said that Lingden even used that technique. According to her, the so-called memory erasing hand chop is when you infuse power into your palm. And by attacking directly, you direct the power to the enemy's brain, ultimately achieving the effect of altering their memory, commonly known as knocked silly. At this point, Bai Di was fainted. Then Xiao Yu told Lingen that while Bai Di was unconscious, he needed to quickly send her back, or it would be troublesome if someone found out. Instantaneously, 
Lingdan followed what Xiao Yu told him. He quickly moved and he jumped off into the rooftop. Nonetheless, while they were heading to Bai Di's room, according to Lingdan, Bai Di should have been placed around there. Suddenly, Bai Di regained consciousness but she was confused about what was wrong with her. Then Lingdan just mumbled into himself that memory erasing hand chop, and Bai Di didn't hear him. Lingdan sighed and according to him, he almost got exposed. All of a sudden, he was stunned, and he was looking at the rooms in their front. Then he was confused about where Bai Di lived. At this point, someone was hiding at the wall. Then it was TNG, and he was shocked when he saw them. At the same time, he was confused about what is the relationship between Boss Lingdan and Bai Di. However, Lingdan found a room. Then he immediately put Bai Di on the bed. According to Lingdan, this room is unoccupied, so she's likely staying there. But suddenly, Bai Di was awake and she was asking what was happening to her. Lingdan was shocked and he mumbled again memory erasing hand chop. But Lingdan asked him where. Then he looked afraid at that moment, and he said sorry to Bai Di that he really couldn't let her discover his identity. Lingdan was sweating and he was stunned. According to Lingdan, he'd never used the memory erasing hand chop on the same person three times in a row before. Although he feels guilty, it's better than being discovered and having his entire family wiped out. Then he looked around and he didn't expect a girl's room to be this messy. But he was startled, when he saw his footstep on the floor. Then he immediately got a mop and cleaned the floor. While cleaning, he said that he couldn't leave any traces. Then he cleaned around by D's room. Meanwhile, at this open cottage, there was a man who was sitting on a chair. Then someone's hiding in the grass. Instantaneously, Xiao Hua Huo and said that since he was there, he didn't need to hide. Then suddenly, a cat appeared. And Xiao Chunha appeared next. He told Xiao Hua Huo that as expected of a young prodigy from the Xiao family, he found him even though he hid so well. Then Xiao Hua Huo replied and said that nothing escaped his eyes. But he was confused about is it necessary to hide when they met face to face. However, Xiao Chunha told him that he'd get straight to the point. He contacted him at midnight because he needed his help to deal with a new student. But Xiao Hua Huo told him that he knew he wouldn't contact him unless something was up. Then he asked him why should he help him. Xiao Chunha told him that when the time came to choose the next head of the family, he would fully support him. Instantaneously, Xiao Hua Huo stood up and he told Xiao Chunha to tell him the guy's identity. Then he told him that he'd seen him before, it was Wu Lingan. Xiao Hua Huo remembered Lingan and said that it's the arrogant kid. Xiao Chunha told him that he would manipulate the draw, and all he had to do was accidentally kill Lingan during the assessment. Then that guy agreed with him and told him that no problem, but he must not forget his promise to him. Nonetheless, Xiao Chunha told him to wait and this guy asked him what else was there. Then Xiao Chunha told him that he needed his help with something else. Zhao Chunha told him that his leg was being tangled by a green water dragon. Then he asked him if he could save him. All of a sudden, the water dragon lifted him up and he looked so afraid at that moment. Then this man was confused about how someone like this became an elder of the Xiao family and an instructor at Xuanyuan Academy. However, he held his weapon and said that there was no choice, he had to step in. In an instant, he jumped off and attacked the water dragon. He swung his weapon, and the water dragon was cut into pieces. Then he said that it was already over. But he was startled when he noticed Xiao Chunha was about to fell. And he immediately caught him. Then he told him that as expected of the Xiao family's genius, his strength is truly reassuring. But the man who saved him asked him if could he get off him now. All of a sudden, he throws him into the water again. Instantaneously, someone appeared and he told Xiao Huahuo that he was just there. Then Xiao Huahuo called him Master Dan. But he was startled when Master Dan told him that Wu Lingdan wasn't as simple as he thought. According to him, the power Wu Lingdan displayed today is something even he would struggle to achieve at his peak. He told Xiao Huahuo that it won't be that easy for him to beat him. But Xiao Huahuo told him that no one in this world could defeat him. Because, he Xiao Huahuo, a time traveler. His name is Xiao Huahuo. He was originally just an ordinary student on Blue Star. Due to an accident, he transmigrated to this cultivation world, and he became a seemingly insignificant young master of the Xiao family. However, 
In an unexpected turn of events, he obtained a ring that housed Master Dan, and thus began his rise to power. According to him, with such a protagonist template, no matter how strong the opponent, they're just stepping stones on his path to advancement. Then Master Dan told him that his confidence was commendable. Then Xiao Huahua was stunned and in his mind, even though they have no personal grudge, his fate as a supporting character is to be defeated by him. Going back to Wu Lingan. At that moment he was sneezing. Then he was stunned and he was confused about why did he suddenly sneeze. However, according to him, the room is clean, and he should be going. Then he immediately went out and he closed the door. He said farewell and suddenly he flew above. At this point, Xiao Huahuo came outside the room. When he entered, he was suddenly shocked. According to him, it seemed like someone entered his room and he was confused about what was going on. Then he saw Bai Di lying on his bed. Instantaneously, he was shocked and he was curious if a female cultivator entered his room. Nonetheless, he was just looking at Bai Di. Then he was confused if isn't that Bai Di from Yujian Peak. According to him, no wonder she's the dream goddess of the younger generation. She even looks beautiful while sleeping. But he told himself that no, this isn't the time to be infatuated. Suddenly, he looked somewhere and he was stunned. He was wondering if a girl was helping him clean his room in the middle of the night and was even lying on the bed he slept on. According to him, Bai Di must like him. However, in his previous life, he read a lot of comics, and protagonists like him always have heroines who fall for them. He was thinking if could Bai Di be his destined heroine. But he was confused about why hasn't Bai Di woken up yet. Instantaneously, Master Dan appeared and he told Xiao Huahuo that it seems Bai Di's consciousness is somewhat damaged, which is preventing her from waking up. Xiao Huahuo gritted his teeth and said that Bai Di put so much effort into cleaning his room that it drained her energy. But Master Dan asked him that aren't he was really thick-skinned. Then he told Master Dan not to worry, he learned a lot of first aid in his previous life but Master Dan was confused about it. All of a sudden, Bai Di was awake and he was asking what was happening to her. At this point, Xiao Huahua was about to kiss her and suddenly she was shocked and puzzled after seeing him. Then instantaneously, Lingan was startled when he heard a sound. Bai Di was mad and she hit Xiao Huahua. She pointed at Xiao Huahua and she called him a scoundrel and she told him not to let her see him again. Xiao Huahua was confused that Bai Di clearly had feelings for him, so why did she attack him? Then Master Dan asked him if is it possible that he was overthinking things. Xiao Huahua was stunned and said that he got it now, women in this world are naturally reserved. Giving her a kiss right away was too much for her. Then Master Dan asked him why he was so sure Bai Di liked him and didn't just walk into the wrong room. But Xiao Huahua was asking him if he even had to ask. Then Xiao Huahua said that it was because he was born a protagonist. Meanwhile, Bai Di immediately went outside and while she was walking, she was confused about how strange and how he ended up on someone else's bed. But according to her, she clearly remembers confronting Wu Lingan. Then suddenly, she was startled and according to her, she remembered now. Wu Lingan is a demon cultivator. She didn't expect to stumble upon such a huge secret. Thinking back, the person in that room earlier was likely in cahoots with Wu Lingan. Then she suddenly smirked and said, How dare you, thief! Sneaking into our Shuantianshu Academy, I'll definitely find proof that you're a demon cultivator. Then she shouted and said Wu Lingan, just wait. All of a sudden, they were shocked at that moment and the man at the window was asking who was shouting in the middle of the night. Then the man on the left said that it sounded like Miss Bai Di. But the other man was confused about what happened between her and Wu Lingan. Meanwhile, the next day, at the performance stage, the lady was confused as to why hasn't the assessment started yet. Then the man said that they'd been waiting for so long. However, Lingan was working out and he said that not a single instructor had shown up and he needed to train even harder. Then Xiao Yu told him not to be so nervous and with his strength, he'd definitely get into the top class. But Lingan told her that he can't afford to slack off. At this point, Bai Di was mad and she told Lingan that he's still putting on air there. Then the man with brown hair asked the man beside him why Bai Di seemed so excited to see brother Lingan. The black-haired asked him if he had forgotten that last night, Bai Di was shouting Wu Lingan's name. 
But the brown-haired man was confused about what happened between them. Then suddenly, TNG laughed and said that it seemed like none of them knew the inside story. But the man behind him asked him what did he know. TNG told them that the relationship between Baidi and Brother Lingan is deeper than they think. Then he wanted to tell them something. But suddenly, Xiao Huahuo put his sword to Tianji's neck, and he was startled. Then Xiao Huahuo told him not to slander Bai Di, and he just said yes. Suddenly, Xiao Huahuo pushed him and he immediately turned back. The brown-haired man was curious why Xiao Huahuo suddenly got so angry. Then the lady said that he was probably Miss Bai Di's sycophant. According to Xiao Huahuo, Bai Di is his destined heroine and there's no way she'd get involved with a nobody. Then Master Dan asked him aren't he was really confident. All of a sudden, Instructor Mei Yenli appeared and he told everyone to be silent. Then all of them were shocked at that moment. Mei Yenli told them that the third assessment would begin now. In this round, life and death are not considered, the purpose is to test their performance in real combat. Based on their performance in the arena, they'll be assigned to appropriate classes. And Dean Yu Tianxing will personally evaluate the assessment process. Nonetheless, Lingdan was startled and according to him, the dean seems to have changed his wig. But Xiao Yu told him to keep his voice down and she asked him if he want to get in trouble. Instructor Huang Luhong was startled and he asked everyone if they understood. Then he pressed the button, and said that the third round is a combat test. All candidates can now draw their match numbers. Then the man in front of Lingdan was the first to draw. In an instant, Lingdan was the next and he put his hand on the machine. Then Xiao Chunha was hiding on a three and he had a plan at that moment. All of a sudden, he throws the weapon, and Lingan catches it. Then he was shocked, while he was looking at his hand. Then there was a number on it and a crack item, and Lingan was confused about what is that thing. That's all for today, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you wish to have another manhwa recap like this, please don't forget to like comment, and subscribe to my channel so you will be updated for more content like this. Until next time.